Hey, welcome back. So today I want to show you how to resource load your construction schedule. So say that I want to add pieces of equipment and um, and laborers to to the schedule to be able to track, um, you know, my peaks and valleys for how much equipment is required and how many men are required. Um, that's what we're going to go over today. Um, just as kind of an example of another project that I worked on, this is this is what you can end up doing is you know, if you labor load your activities by trade, um, and then you can create these distributions to figure out, well, how many men are required, you know, on site to, to achieve your plan. Uh, let me get rid of my face here so you can see that. Um, there we go. So, you know, we see this distribution here and we see 8,000 man hours in, this is July of 2020. So just doing some, some rough math, I can say 8,000 man hours that month so how many working days per month that's 22 working days per month and then divided by the number of work hours per day which is uh, eight work hours per day so that peak um, i should see roughly 45 men per day uh, between those those trades if i'm want to achieve uh, the, the plan progress so, you know, if I'm the project manager and I get out on site and I only see 10 guys out there in that month, I'm thinking, hey, we're, we're way behind um, as far as what's required to complete that scope of work. So let's go back to our schedule here. And um, so I'm, I'm going to create, I'm just going to do a general um, labor resource and, and, and load that. So, so if you want to break it down by individual subcontractors, um, you know, or scopes of work, just all you're going to be doing is the same exact process, but just um, adding different resources based off of the scope of work. So I'm going to my resource library here. I'm adding a new resource and I'm going to call this one um, labor and I'll just call this one my labor resource and I'll press finish. And um, I want my default units per time to be set to, um, let's call that four men per day. And make sure that, um, you know, it depends. If you're, if you're wanting to be, do men per day, which is what I'm doing on this default units per time, make sure on your edit user preferences that your units of time is set for days. Because if it's set for hours, you're gonna see that's 32 hours per day. And if you were mistakenly putting four per day in there, that's actually being entered as four hours per day, which um, when I convert it back into my, my days, you know, for my men per day, that ends up being, you know, half, um, half a man per day. So just make sure that you're being consistent. Like I said, I'm using days as my time units. So I'm gonna do four men per day. And then um, if we go down to here to our details, this specific resource is going to be um, labor hours or labor units. So I, I want my resource type to be labor. And um, I'm going to set my max units per time to four to equal my default units per time. Um, this is the, the max units per time is only relevant if you're uh, leveling your schedule, which I'm not going to get into in this video. But um, so it, it, it's really not important uh, to you unless you're leveling your schedule. So I'm just going to keep it equal to my default units per time. And then if I go to my activities now, and now I want to assign that resource maybe specifically to just my earthwork activities. So let's just go ahead and do that. I'll highlight those, right click, assign resources, and I'm going to assign that labor resource. And now you can see here, my budgeted labor units populated as 100. So this is um, 100 man days that's required to complete this construction task. And, and the way that it, it does that is it does takes the original duration, which is 25, times my default units per time, which was on my resource here as four per day. So 25 times four gives me a total of 100 labor units, which is um, you know, man days. So um, yeah, that is, that, that is how that works. Um, if I wanted to do uh, pieces of equipment, what I could do is go back to my resource library here. I'm gonna create a new resource 
And um, let's, I'm just going to finish this wizard here and exit out of this. And I want to outdent this resource because I don't want it to be a child to labor. I, I want it to be um, a standalone resource. And so let's call this one, um, maybe it's excavator. And we'll call this my excavator resource. And I, instead of a labor resource, you know, an excavator isn't labor hours. I mean, there's a, there's a man operating it, but um, I want this to specifically be a, a non-labor resource because I want to measure it in uh, pieces of equipment per day. So my excavator, I, um, you know, my, my tasks can have one excavator per day on them. And uh, so let's set the default units per time to one. My max units per time is one. And so let's go ahead and find those activities that require the excavator. So maybe it's my earthwork, my foundations. So let's go ahead and uh, let's assign that resource to all of these activities here. I'm gonna right click, assign resources, and that'll be my excavator. And so now we see here that gets added to the budgeted non-labor units column. So if you're not seeing that, just go to the columns here. And uh, here, I'll, I'll show you what that looks like. So th this is probably what your screen is looking like when you open up your columns. Go down to units and find the budgeted labor units. And so if I apply that one, that one just takes the, um, you can see here that that's just summing up any resource type that is a labor resource type and that's uh summing up the amount there which is 100 and you can see that w you, you you might ask yourself well where's the 25 units shouldn't this be 125 units total no because this is a non-labor resource type so i gotta bring that column over and that's where that one is it's it's gonna um, summarize all of the non-labor resource types um so maybe you know, once you've labor loaded your schedule with equipment and, and people, you might want to um, see like a distribution of how, how many pieces of, of equipment per day are required. Um, so if I go here to my activity usage profile, I can see here um, that I have, the, it's already doing it for me, but I want you to be able to figure out how to do it yourself, which is you would right click down here in this box and you go to activity usage profile options. And you want to display specifically the units. And as far as what bars to show, you wanna show non-labor um, bars for if you're specifically wanting to see the um, equipment resource. And then make sure you have the budgeted, um, the budgeted by date check there. And so this shows you now, um, because my time scale is set to week days, so if I go to my time scale and my date interval is set to week days, I can see here that I start out on the project with one excavator per day, and then it jumps, and, and for a couple weeks I have two excavators per day, and then I have three excavators per day, and then it drops back down to, to two and then to one. Um, so that's kind of useful, um, being able to know, you know how many pieces of equipment are going to be required. If I wanted to look for the labor hours and I wanted to see what, that, what was required for that, I would just simply check this labor um, uh, bar filter. And then that shows me my distribution of uh, men per day that's required. And this is roughly, is this four? If I double click one of those data points, it's four per day and up through Friday, September 21st, that's a cumulative um, amount of 12, um, 12 men total, uh, or 12, 12 man days that, um, that ha have been worked total. So yeah, that is, uh, that's a little bit about the um, resource loading uh, on a schedule. I guess um, maybe before we go, if um, after you've, kind of assigned these resources if you go back and you say um, you know you know say say your earthwork you realize hey it's it's gonna take more than you know um, what we said four men per day what you can end up doing is go to your activity details 
and the resources down here and you can change your budget budgeted units and say you realize hey it's going to take you know five men per day and so maybe down here you say okay that's 125 units instead and so you can you can go back through individually on your activities and change the um, the budgeted units if if the four per day wasn't sufficient in order to accomplish that task likewise you can also change the you know pieces of equipment so maybe this this specific earthwork activity um, it's two pieces per day so that would be two times 25 so my budgeted unit might be 50 you know so you can go ahead and manually make those changes in um, on the resources and then um, uh, yeah so that's how you do that so I hope that was helpful let me know if you have any comments or questions down below and uh, hope to see you in the next video all right take care